That's good. Uh, so it looks like we're going to be bringing you guys round five of the losers bracket. What what is that in terms of? Okay, so this is the semifinals of the losers bracket. Um, team Raisin, Ryzen. That's got to be Ryzen. That can't be Raisin. Uh, versus Ink Pressure. Uh, both teams are readying up. I don't know much about either one of these teams. I think Ink Pressure is made up of a lot of players that are formerly of... Uh, what was that team's name? Uh, Leviathan Warriors. That's who they were. Uh, team Ryzen. As I look over this roster, not too familiar with these players, but we'll get to know them. We'll get to know them pretty quickly. I actually uh, scripted against Team Raisin. It's uh, they were actually pretty strong. You're saying Raisin, is that right? Ra I don't know. <laughs> uh, team Raisin, Team Raisin. It's uh, it's. Um... Don't worry. Somebody's gonna call us out in chat and tell us we're idiots anyway. So yeah. we'll just stick with whatever. <laughs> yep. But uh, I scrimmed against them uh, early on, and they were pretty much strong, uh, especially uh, when pressuring. We really didn't have a chance, so uh, they actually have a very good chance in my eyes against Ink Pressure. But Ink Pressure also not to be underestimated. We saw them on stream today already, right? Um, I I don't actually I don't think so. Um. No, no, we, um, they played, uh, Port Rakume, then they lost to Xanadu. Uh, so no, we haven't seen, um, we haven't seen Ink Pressure on stream yet. Um, so they beat Port Rakume in the winner's bracket, lost to Xanadu, 3-2. to two. Oh wait, Xanadu's not here, they must have lost, oh, Xanadu lost to Team Ryzen, uh, just now, 2-0, to zero. okay. Uh, oh, how did I miss this? Ink Pressure knocked out Avalanche. The, uh, the, uh, the, the runner-up from the last tournament. So, wow, both of these teams, uh, I guess it's not fair to say they pull off upsets, but both of these teams kind of knocked out more well-known teams in this tournament here. So, uh, and Team Ryzen knocked out Persistence earlier in Loser's Bracket. Okay, so we got, we got some pretty good teams here coming in. Um, some pretty good new teams that we're going to get a look at. So, this is going to be an exciting one to watch. Um, Absolutely. Maybe this, we're going to see a back and forth in all, uh, maybe in all five games, like a last chance against Luau. It really, it's, it really was intense. And if you said uh, that um, all the teams uh, have beaten well-known teams, then it will be heated, of course. We're getting, uh, I'm getting some info from my sources here. Ink Pressure is a full Latino team. And somebody's talking about a Spanish Grand Finals. I honestly don't know the, uh, the nationalities of a lot of these teams. Um, maybe we should like add like a flag feature or something. That'd be interesting. Uh, but this is, once again, Loser Semifinals as we... Why are, why are we waiting for them to join the room? Did they, like, start game one or something, and we're just going to hop in after that? Because they're having... That is my assumption, is that we're going to hop in in the middle of this set. Yeah, maybe, uh... Maybe a misinterpretation, because uh, on the results announcements, uh, it said that the teams are play f that the teams may play freely as soon as both teams are ready. But the losers, the losers final, but we are actually at the losers, the losers semifinals. I always say Luna for whatever reason. <laughs> so maybe it's a bit of a, a misunderstanding. Although on um, Battlefy it says uh, wait till you're told to start by the TOs. Well, we we don't always get to show the losers uh, like round five or semifinals. It it's kind of depends on when the stream ends on the winners finals. Um, if we have time to get to it or not, and like it, we don't want to just hop in. You're gonna be streamed. Okay, so it looks like we are going to attempt to get them into the stream lobby. Um, I don't know. We might be like in the middle of this set. For all I know, I. 
I mean, they started talking to each other about about 20 minutes ago at this point, so I would assume they've already got a game or two in. Um, but this set is going to be a best of three. Um, since it is in the loser semis, they, we want to get these games over with so that we can, uh, so that last chance doesn't have to wait forever for their grand finals opponent. Um, but yeah, at this point, we're just kind of trying to get contact and get them in the room. And in the meantime, we'll just kind of talk endlessly about nonsense, I guess, because maybe we should have taken that break. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> What kind of what kind of tea are you drinking on? Mm. <sighs> sipping the tea, sipping the tea like a sippy. Sipping the tea like what? What kind of tea is it? Um, it's oh my god. Uh, damn, I have to, I have to translate that. It's quite uh, in German. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's fine. There's. Uh, what am I? Uh, I guess we could just commentate the chat for a bit. It Looks like uh, Little Pret Frog has redeemed literally nothing for 20 points. Um, has redeemed literally nothing about five or six separate time here for 20 points. So that's about a thousand points that Little Pet Frog has used there for literally nothing. I don't know um, if that's a best use uh, of your points there. Doesn't seem like a good trade-off. Um... But uh, we'll keep we'll keep you updated on that point situation. Um, and the tea is actually uh, Westbury Waltmeister. Westbury Waltmeister. Yes. Okay. What what flavor is that? Mm, it's the, like or... uh, it's like Westbury. <laughs> oh, raspberry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Bear bear with like us the, here. Folks. Like the Westbury pie. <laughs> I was I was born in uh, southern United States, so English isn't really my first language either. Um, but we are we're we're figuring some stuff out here. Um, it looks like some players are joining a room. Uh, who are these guys? Uh, okay, it is looks like Ink Pressure is in here. Um, if I can look at the score, nobody they haven't reported a score, so maybe this will be game one or. Yay! Let me, let me just... <laughs> Game one is not lost. The stream is saved. <laughs> First map is Splat Zones and Anchovy Games. Yes. Okay. What? Well, why were they talking to each other for twenty minutes and they didn't? Uh, maybe uh -huh. they realized that um, they have to wait. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Either way. We're gonna be we're gonna stop talking about random nonsense here, and we're gonna be actually giving you guys some Splatoon action, which is uh, hopefully what you came here for. Uh, Team Ryzen is what uh, that's what I'm gonna go with. If I'm wrong, I apologize, but uh, I'm gonna go with Team Ryzen here versus Ink Pressure. Again, this is the losers semifinals. Uh, winner of this will move on to play Luau. This will be a best of three. And we're going to be starting off with, I believe, Splat Zones at Anchovy Games. Yes. Um, so, it, it, you said you scrimmed Team Ryzen. What what do you think their comp might be coming out here? Like, what, what do you think we could expect to see from them? That's noteworthy. Uh, they, I think they're going to play pretty much aggressively. Uh, that's what I played uh, against us. But I have to admit, on that scrim, I wasn't really in a good shape. I really was uh, in a burnout situation. I am now doing my my break to to cool it down a bit. So uh, it might be that Wazen is going to play a completely different comp. Um, I'm gonna be excited for that, but I think they're going to play. Uh, I think they're going to play aggressive, especially on uh, Splatoon's Anchovy, where you really have to play aggressive to uh, create a lockdown situation and uh, don't let them score anything at all. Yes, and I remember playing Leviathan Warriors personally, uh, personally, um, a long time ago, but I can't remember specifically what it is that they do now. There's only two players on here that I recall from Leviathan Warriors that is now playing for Ink Pressure, which is um, 
but we'll uh i guess we'll learn about these teams as they start to ready up here and we'll just go from there and this time teams are taking much longer so i think we're not going to uh, see some stale um some stale comps maybe we're going to see some uh variation tonight the real question is are we going to see another 52 deco i am willing to bet no but uh, not on based Angie, off no. of what i've seen at this point i guess anything goes i think on anchovy uh, stingray <laughs> especially with the 52 is not the best <laughs> weapon to go but uh k, k gal could be a good choice uh, especially on that zones Let's see. We do see a hero roller coming out for the side of Team Ryzen, along with a Remix H3D and a Forge, and uh, a much more aggressive comp with the Nautilus being the uh, like pseudo backliner there for the side of Ink Pressure, along with a T Tech Junior and K Pro as the H3 going down before getting armor ready, and armor coming out for Ink Pressure. So a very aggressive opening here for Ink Pressure. Uh, as they look to try to get control of the uh, of the flat here on the enemy side and trying to push up this fan. Uh, the ink armor really uh, did a good job. Uh, they could push up very early, especially with the junior getting an early armor. Now the Booyah Bomb comes in from Alguian. Doesn't cap zone entirely. I think it's because uh, it landed right onto that block, uh, which weakens the Booyah Bomb a little bit in my opinion. But uh, it looks like Ink Pressure doing a good pressure situation right now. But Raisin with the with the zone actually with bubbles and stuff. Yes, Raisin uh, able to finally stop the that first push there. And oh, a nice pick there uh, by the Remix player as they're able to get control of the enemy fan and try to get uh, control of the plat as well as we see the Booyah Bomb coming out trying to catch Edgar as they escape with the uh, Junior on that side so uh, it's gonna be oh I don't know if lead is gonna be flipped over here it's just gonna come down to the, whoever can get the first pick in this kind of stalemate here and it is gonna be the splashdown oh actually they survived that splashdown but the plat is now in control of team Ryzen and that is going to be lead for them as well uh, the, the, a nice um, flank uh, uh, <laughs> a nice flank from the roller though uh, splashdown was a bit unlucky though that didn't kill but a nice follow up still now 15 points down and the booyah bomb flies in can it cap zone for ink pressure yes it does but the booyah bomb follows right back from team ryzen but lead going to ryzen and a pretty comfortable lead as there's a lot of penalty points that ink pressure has to eat through here before they can start doing some permanent damage but they do have two players down on the side of team ryzen so ink pressure is going to find a way uh to get into a good position to where they can try to do a lockout here as we see the nautilus kind of dancing around on top of that tower just getting paint down but that's giving uh the forge enough time to get bubbles but those bubbles don't do anything and actually the forge is going to go down as a result of it a nice pick there by the uh by the t-tech so all the penalty points are gone now and they survived this booyah bomb so more points are going to be coming as well can oh but the roller does get the pick i don't know if that's going to be enough to flip the zone back though this is intense right now. Team Wizen saving that offset from Ink Pressure. Capping the zone right before they can cap the lead. And they still do keep the zone though. Team Wizen did a really good job keeping on that zone. And now Edgar with the Junior has to fight the, this way back. Getting Ink Armor out of here. But he wasn't also with an ink armor. Oh, and that jump out is not going to happen. Uh, so control going back to Team Ryzen, um, who's in a very comfortable position here. They don't have many many penalty points left to go through. They do have control of zone. They don't have most players alive though, so it looks like control will go back to the side of ink pressure. But ink pressure once again, a lot of penalty points to go through, and just about a minute to do it. And yes, as you said, Ink Pressure now with the zone back. 35 cooldown points though, plus uh, 
four points for uh, actually five points for the lead. 50 seconds now on the clock. Algoin with the booyah bomb already ready. Throws it into the zone. Throws into the block though, which doesn't cap the zone. But still, with the follow up from Team Wizen, well coordinated, still keeps it up and uh, puts on much pressure on Ink Pressure. Yes, and uh, all the pin now, the zone did go back into control of Ryzen here, or of uh, 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 Ink Pressure, I'm sorry. But all those penalty points that they tried to wipe away just went back to them. So now. Another comfortable position here, and as the, the, we see the last player left alive on screen now, this K-Pro. Oh, it does get a nice pick there, <laughs> but the weapon nice. itself isn't going to be enough uh, to flip the zone completely back into their favor, especially with that Booyah Bomb coming in. So Ryzen able to hold on and win this first game. And again, this is not a best of five like we've seen in winners. This is best of three. So Ink Pressure is definitely feeling the pressure now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But we saw the Booyah Bomb secure in uh, the win for Team Wizen. Kill counts, yeah, quite equal, more in favor of Team Wizen. So we saw that uh, Team Wizen really uh, dominated. Not, not dominated, pretty much had his had their game uh, in their favor. But it's just Blood Sounds. And everything can happen still. And we do have Clam Blitz, I see. On what map? I cannot see it on Battlefy. Damn. <laughs> uh, Walleye Warehouse. Oh! Um, um, but if we go back to that last game, um, the kills didn't really tell the story, but the specials absolutely did. Uh, Team Ryzen got off seven bubbles with a with a uh, a splatter shot pro. I don't know how you do that. Six booyah bombs with the remix, and on a map like Walleye, where if you use your specials effectively, especially Stingray, uh, the team that might uh, the team that pops off the most specials here and uses them the most effectively uh, should be able to win this game here. Um, personally, I love Claw, uh, Clan Blitz at Wale Warehouse. Um, I don't know if it's the best map and mode for competitive, <laughs> just because it's so easy to get locked out. Um, with your spawn being at that narrow, uh, little hallway there at the very beginning. Um, but yeah, I think this one's going to come down to who can get the most specials off, like we saw in the last game. Yep, uh... Although Walleye Warehouse uh, pretty much uh, having good opportunity to flank on both sides, so uh, the backliners might have watched to watch out for both sides of the flanks, so uh, no sneaky clams can come in and win this game on overtime, which is uh, pretty notorious for clamlets. Uh, we see the exact same comp coming out. Um for the side of Team Ryzen, basically. Yeah, it's the exact same comp. I think they used an Inzap instead of a, a Junior this time around. But we do see the Sploosh 7. So the the aggression coming right back out and uh, uh, Team Ink Pressure um, electing go armorless here. Uh, I guess that, that kind of makes sense. It, there's not a lot of map that you can paint here. So it, it's not a map that you can really spam armor on. Uh, at least effectively, but we do see the armor user getting a nice cancel on the hammer there, so maybe I spoke a little too soon. And now all players actually have to watch the uh, watch the flanks now, as I uh, so, as I said. The, oh, lucky with the inkjet with the, with a very good inkjet. This is why I always play T Tech on uh, on this map because you can cheese so much out with the inkjet to not being hit for once. Uh, pretty much uh, <laughs> a chat move from an inkjet there. An interesting trade down in the alley. Actually, two players going down now um, for the side of ink pressure as we, well, actually, it, it oh, a uh, jump is coming in here. I didn't see how the player got in, but that jump uh, just a little too short. Um, the throw just didn't really have the strength behind it to get to the basket. But even if that uh, throw had connected, it didn't really seem like Ink Pressure was in a position to add more points to it. So that, honestly, that might be a blessing in disguise that they don't just give away a free Mercy Clamp. Um, uh, yeah, Team Wizen with an unlucky short throw 
and uh, this gives the uh, impression the opportunity now to uh, push up for themselves and they do with the stamp which gets the night inkjet coming out now all specials are going all in right now but they got pushed back from team wisen a good defensive work from team wisen but still the the heat is not off yet no, it is not. A lot of clams in the favor of the ink pressure here. They're at 26. They are popping Booyah Bomb here, but there are a lot of defensive specials that are online and ready to be used uh, by Team Ryzen, who honestly haven't really popped off a lot of specials in this first half. No bubbles, no splashdowns, only one Booyah. The specials heavily in the favor of uh, the ink pressure right now, who has 34 clams. They have enough clams to knock out Team Ryzen into the Stone Age, but one player going down, they are able to pop the basket and get a second clam in and a wipe coming out. But honestly, if you're Team Ryzen, you gotta be happy that they only scored 40 points on you, because that could have been much, much worse. Absolutely, 60 points, optimal push. They can now uh, compensate two super clams, but, the, but they, uh, they are not allowed to concede one more clam after that. Team Ryzen now with a pity clam picked up. They playing with a they play actually playing with the back line, and you see uh, from Ink Pressure they are going to play aggressively uh, with the Ankylos comp, which is uh, always a risky move, but it works out as we can see here. Yeah, Ink Pressure is gonna need to find ways to keep the pressure up here. Um, like you said, with that anchorless comp, they're gonna need to be keep this aggression going, but that aggression can work against you as we do see two players going down. But they are getting the trades they need. They're fine with losing players as long as they drag down members from the other team with them. And that is giving them, uh, that is allowing them to hold on to control of mid here as we approach about a minute 10 left to go. Um, the specials just aren't coming out for Team Ryzen, and that's kind of resulting in them not getting an any kind of position to be comfortable to make a push go. Uh, as we can see on the kill count uh, on the side of Ink Pressure, pretty, uh, pretty much balanced, but um, on Team Ryzen, the heavy with, uh, with a good kill count, but still, they cannot convert it into pushing power though. Te 100 to 60 still left, 40 seconds on the clock, the time is taken, although Team Ryzen is still leading with 1-0, so it is not the world, but still, you want to avoid uh, silver scrapes, especially in losers, in the losers bracket. Yeah, but they, here's their opportunity right here. They just got another pick, so that is effectively two players down. One just came back into spawn. They do have specials ready, and a lot of clams, at least enough to get lead. So if they can find ways to just pop those bubbles and get a splashdown off somehow, Oh, and Booyah Bomb coming out as well. They do lose one player to this hammer that's come out just at the perfect time. The hammer is going to need to get one more pick. It does, but the basket is open, and they do get lead. If they throw one more clam in here, it's over. I don't know where the forge is, but now uh, a power clam is formed. Even though they do get lead, they need to play defense now, because if they pop the basket, all they got to do is throw in one clam, and oh, Andrew was in position. I don't think a jump came in, and with two players coming down, they're not going to have enough time to get... Uh, yeah, they're not going to have enough time to get up there. So a nice push there to get lead by t uh, Ink Pressure, but an even more impressive defense because it looked like Team Ryzen was just uh, storming down. Actually, no, that was a... Uh, I'm getting my teams mixed up here. Team Ryzen <laughs> is the one who won. <laughs> yes, Team Ryzen won this one, but it is actually, again, a clam blitz, a legit clam blitz moment in the last seconds. Late taken for Team Ryzen, which uh, had, a, which also had a bad time pushing up, but in the last seconds they really did, they really went all in, avoiding silver scrapes in losers semifinals. I'm moving up to losers finals now. Damn, that was. All, that was actually pretty intense, especially the Clamblitz game. Yeah, it, it, you saw Edgar was in position in uh, Team Ryzen's base. Now, like timing that jump would have been very difficult, and timing that throw as soon as you land would have been hard, but you, there was a window there for Ink Pressure to, to take back lead in overtime. Uh, but it just the jumps just didn't come in, and it just didn't happen, so... Uh, frames away from victory was ink pressure there but 
they have officially been eliminated. And we, I know there is, we're going to go to the next round, but we're actually going to take a break this time. Yes. <laughs> now I'm gonna, now get I up into drink. <laughs> yes. Before, before, before your voice cracks down. <laughs> now, once again, because uh, we're gonna we're gonna keep reminding you guys about this. The Unname Tournament. This upcoming Saturday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. It is run by the Low Ink staff, but it is not a Low Ink tournament. I.e., everyone is welcome to join. Uh, it is on Smash GG. Make sure you look out for that. We have a big announcement coming on after this tournament, so stick around. I'm getting water. You are going to get more tea. And you are watching Low Ink.